welcome everybody to the Silicon Valley Health Institute and this uh, fine night. It's a little bit misting outside, but it's pretty pleasant. Um, I'd like to say why we're here. We are here to help educate you, the public, on health with an emphasis on optimal wellness, anti-aging medicine, longevity, and uh, overall well-being. We do this by sharing information and bringing in speakers who are experts in various disciplines. So my name is Randy Kuntke, and I'll be your moderator tonight. Uh, do we have anybody here for the first time? Great. Terrific. Welcome. Okay. Well, we hope you come back, that you have a great time tonight. Um, special welcome to you. The cost for attending a single evening of these sessions is $10. You can get a real bargain for $60 and get an annual membership, which entitles you to free attendance. We're a 501c3 nonprofit, and we rely on those memberships and donations to help us bring you these programs. You can join here tonight at the front desk, or you can go to our website, which is www.svhi.com. Please visit our website. There's also lots of great information there, schedule information about the upcoming meetings that we're having and an archive of the previous talks. So as you can see in the back, we're recording. And um, uh, you can find those talks. Uh, you can find the recording of the previous sessions. So we try to get them at least within a month. Sometimes, uh, maybe it's a little soon, but we try to get within. With, so, so by today, you can see last month's meeting. So um, if any of you have cell phones or need to take a phone call, uh, please silence your phone. Uh, and take the call outside. Also, uh, since we are being recorded, please do um, raise your hand and wait for the microphone to come before you speak so that we can capture what you have to say on the video. All right, uh, and the most important thing, the restrooms are out the door. Uh, short walk down to the left, uh, take a left, you go up along the side of the building and a little ways down there are uh, restrooms. And I've just heard there's some handicapped restrooms there too. So if you feel like trying to find those, good luck to you and let me know how that goes. All right. I'd like to now start the evening with questions. So uh, our tradition here is to ask questions of the group. And sometimes there's, uh, we have a lot of att people attending in the group that for completely lay people, people who are, um, you know, hobbyists in the whole field, that's kind of my, where I fall into it as kind of a nutrition is one of my hobbies, uh, to uh, doctors and other kinds of experts. So, um, and then sometimes people just know things, right? You've, you've shared experiences, you have questions. So I'd like to put it out to you. Do you have, does anybody in the group have a question that you'd like to ask um, about health, wellness, nutrition, um, Maybe something you read, something you heard, something you saw, um, something somebody said to you, you know, what about this, what about that? And uh, let me be right there. Yes, sir. Right. The far infrared affects mitochondria, which are in the um, muscles, the cells of the epithelium, and in the, in the muscles that surround it. And when you have normal energy production, if you, if you normalize energy, energy production, those cells relax and they can dilate so that they're not restricting blood flow as much. So this is one of the things that you tend to see in people who are hypothyroid or hypometabolic and have low body temperature, low pulse rate, tendency towards constipation, um, sleeping problems, borderline depression, um, that um, their, because their metabolism is low, they respond to these kinds of, 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 uh, of interventions. And that the, before they're treated, you see a kind of modeling of their microcirculation. So if you do an infrared photograph of the skin, what you see, it look, kind of looks like cottage cheese or like those you know, clouds in the sky with the little tiny bubbles all over the place where you've got... Uh, low circulation areas that are very cold and white and, and high circulation areas next to them, and th it's very uneven. Um, so the, the vascular system is um, uh, malfunctioning in terms of that 
of, in terms of basic energy, and this is one of the things that you see. In ter other things malfunction in terms of autoimmune disease risks and um, you know n neurodegenerative diseases and dementias and things like that as well. But the when the infrared light hits it, or you get microcurrents produced by pulsed electromagnetic fields, um, that in, in energizes the, the local tissues. So the infrared light lands on the mitochondria, is absorbed by the cytochromes, which pump the, the electrons and generate ATP. Well, microcurrents help the flow of, of ions through the membranes. So every time a nerve cell fires, uh, calcium or some other cation uh, ion flows into the cell, and the cell has to pump that back out again. And that pumping charges the membrane so it can fire again. So when you have a lack of energy, there's a, there's a problem with that pumping, and little microcurrents cause the, the ions that are in the channel to move forward and backwards. And so it's kind of like a, a gating system that if, they, if, the, if the ions are moving back and forth, they flow through the, the pores better. They flow through the ion channels better. Did I mention we get a little technical sometimes? All right. Uh, more questions? Uh, you're pointing where? Oh, oh same gentleman. Okay. As we know, all medications by pharmaca is, you know, goes through your liver or kidneys, so they mess it up gradually. So my question is, if you want to get out of them, get rid of them, what is the safest way to do it while you're introducing the natural herbs and uh, supplements and all those other hacks? Anybody has any thoughts on that? As the lady said, just do it, get off it, get off those things, yeah. Um, I, I, I want to caution, I, I just want to say that you know, we, we tend to have this point of view that just because it's natural or there's herbs or whatever that, that uh, it's necessarily good for you. And, and I remember one time being in a seminar and somebody who was a naturopath took something that made her worse. And my point is that I mean, it's easy to kind of vilify the pharmaceutical companies and stuff like that. They're just purifying what's already out there. That's not all they're doing, but, but just because it's natural does not by definition mean that it's safe. And just because it's pharmaceutical company made doesn't really mean it's bad for you. <laughs> Steve's gonna add now. Okay. Um, the actual carcinogenicity of of different chemicals was actually tested by Bruce Ames and colleagues up at UC Berkeley. And they found that the percentage of natural chemicals that cause cancer and man-made chemicals that cause cancer were identical, both running about 50%. Um, so the, the primary difference between chemicals that stress the liver that might be pharmaceuticals and ones that are found in plants is that um, if the plant is something that we've been eating for a long, 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 long time, that our livers may be well adapted to metabolizing it, and we may not be well adapted to metabolizing certain drugs, and therefore they might have a harder uh, impact on, on, the, on the liver. But the, the primary cancer exposure that humans have nowadays is through phytotoxins that are found in vegetables, plant matter. It's the largest single exposure. So that's natural, not man-made. Yes. Um, plants can't run away from us. They don't have legs. So they defend themselves with chemical warfare. So wheat has estrogen so that the male buffalo that eat the wheat um, end up having a sterility problem and can't reproduce. So different kinds of chemicals that are found in, in plants are designed to discourage predation. And if you, you know, s celery, for example, has a chemical called sorolin, which is a photosensitizing agent. And if you have diseased celery and it's harvested and, and goes through your, your, your uh, grocery store, the clerks who are handling the celery will get rashes 
on their hands because they're picking up the sorolin from the celery and the fluorescent lights are causing photosensitivity <laughs> reactions with that chemical in their hands. So, you know, it, that's one of the things about plants that is not that well understood is that not only are these chemicals, you know, toxic primarily to the, the, or, the, the animals that eat the plants, but that this is a dynamic process, that the toxic burden of the plant increases in response to predation. And so, you know, that it can vary by a factor of 100 between the concentration when the plant is healthy and happy versus the concentration when the plant is diseased. And this actually ran across this when I was doing volunteer work for the HIV community in San Francisco, so it was like 15, 20 years ago. They were harvesting hypericin from St. John's wort. And this grows wild in eastern Oregon and eastern Washington. And um, it turns out that because of the dryness of the weather, the, 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 the hypericin content of that, those particular plants is way higher and gave more hypericin than the plants that were healthy in gardens that were being well watered. <laughs> so they went actually with a big truck and harvested <laughs> goat weed from eastern Washington for that reason. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me. All right. I just want to add what Steve said. The only problem is the medicine the, uh, that we buy at drugstore has been only around maybe 50 or 100 years. Some of them are only 10 years old. But we have plant history going back thousands of years. Ayurvedic medicines goes back several thousand years. So we have a history what works for certain diseases and what doesn't work. That's all I wanted to add. Okay, thank you. I just this kind of reminded me that um, the biology uh, and you know human biology, all biology is um, incredibly intricate, complex, beautiful uh, system, and uh, we tend to want to break it down into the very simple concepts, and it just may not always uh, that may not always be the best way to understand it. But there's there's a lot of historical knowledge and like that goes back thousands of years and uh, uh, you know it's it's I honor all of that as well. Um, so if there are no more questions, we'll move on to our next segment. <laughs>